Now, children of Israel uh, crossed over Jordan River. But while they were crossing over the river, the Lord commanded Joshua and the people to pick up the stones out of the river. And they had to bring them into the land they entered into after crossing. Now, hear the word of God as it is written in chapter 5 of the book of Joshua. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain. On the very same day, then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. And the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. The children of Israel crossed over the Jordan River and they entered into the west side of the Jordan, which was the promised land by the Lord to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did they cross over the Jordan? Did they swim? Did they board a boat or a ship? No. They crossed over the river. They stepped on dry land. When the priest's feet uh, dipped edge of the water who were uh, bearing the Ark of the Covenant, water from upstream was cut off and the ground, the bottom, appeared. And in this way, uh, all people in the congregation, uh, even to the last person, they stepped on dry land. And as I mentioned, the Lord commanded Joshua and the people to pick up the stones from the river, and each tribe picked one. So total, 12 stones were picked up from the river and they brought them into the land. And they entered into a place which was called Gilgal, and they encamped there. So first thing they did after entering into the land, they set up those 12 stones for their monument, for their remembrance. Because next generation and later on, the children would not remember what the Lord did for them. Because the Lord miraculously parted the river and every single person in the congregation could cross over the river, uh, stepping on dry land. So after that, when people saw the monument, they could remember what amazing thing the Lord did for them. 
So when the people encamped the Gilgal, the Lord told them, verse 9, I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the Gilgal came from the verb rolled away. And you can check, you can do spell check. And this Hebrew word obviously meant a lot to them. And they settled in a temporary and they encamped at Gilgal. And after they entered into this place, the Lord commanded Joshua and his people to do a few very special things. Obviously, they set up the stones for their memory. And after that, the Lord told them, now you need to be circumcised. A circumcision as a ritual was commanded by the Lord to the children of Israel. We just may think that was commanded for a hygiene reason, hygiene purpose. But actually, it was a ritual, religious ritual commanded by the Lord. Because the circumcision has to do with the removal of unclean skin, filthy skin from our body. It has to do with purification and cleansing. And the Lord commanded the children of Israel to do that for their holy ritual. And later, the Lord replaced it with special washing sacrament, which is called baptism. And we all know that John the Baptist, uh, he baptized the people into the church. Where? Jordan River. Perhaps he used the water from the river to baptize, to cleanse the people. So the Lord, because he did not institute, he did not make the ritual baptism yet, the people were circumcised, and by doing this, they became the members of the church, and they could acknowledge each other, uh, brothers, so in this way, they did the first thing was commanded by the Lord. And as we remember, the children of Israel, they entered into the 10th of the first month, the 10th day of the first month, which is Aviv. The first month of the Jewish calendar is called Aviv, and it's in springtime, so it might be better than. Uh, our January. So, do you remember what happened uh, on, the fifth, on the 14th day of the first month? While they were in Egypt, the Lord sent out his angels. And these angels visited every Egyptian household, from Pharaoh even to their livestock, and they brought the death on the firstborn of every family, even every livestock. So after this, after this terrible thing, uh, Pharaoh could not keep the Israelites anymore, and he had to let them go. But the Lord miraculously, he protected the children of Israel and even their livestock. So those angels who brought death upon the Egyptians, they passed over the house of Israel. So they celebrated the special day and they hold a big feast to remember that and to celebrate that. And that was called the Passover. So when they entered the 10th of the day of the first month, after a few days, they had to celebrate the Passover. And at the time, they did not eat any more manna, which was from the Lord, from heaven. They could eat the produce of the land. So they made some unleavened bread, part of a tradition, and also they ate parched grain, scorched grain from their land. Isn't it nice to eat the real food? Manna was great, and they were sustained 
by the food while they were in the wilderness. But now they enter into their own land. They became the owner of the land and they could enjoy the produce of the land. We may wonder why the Lord said he rolled away the reproach of Egypt from the people. What happened while the children of Israel, they were in Egypt? Weren't they the national guest when they moved down? In the beginning, they were a very special guest to the nation. But later, because they stayed like 400 years there, later kings did not remember what their ancestor Joseph did for them. So, the later kings treated the children of Israel very harshly. They put them into slaves. So obviously they didn't have any honor and great anything. So when the Lord said, I will roar away reproach of Egypt, that meant the children of Israel were not slaves anymore. So the Lord will remove all that shame and blame in the past, which they experienced in Egypt. And after they entering into the promised land flowing with milk and honey, now they can rear masters and the owners of the land. We want to be owners. We want to be masters. We don't want to be shameful slaves. And the Lord will roll away all the shame and problem we have. How can we become masters and owners in our life? Perhaps we should remember what the Lord did for us. Because what we enjoy, what we really like to do, all these things are given by the Lord. Think about our family members, mom and dad, our brothers and sisters, it's great to help them, perhaps at most times, not all the time. And we should be thankful to the Lord. And think about our great church, beautiful school, and our good friends around us. We enjoy. All these things are given by the Lord. And another important thing, we should be clean. We need to cleanse our thoughts and our minds we need to remove bad ideas and thoughts. We should remove maybe our meanness, our unkind attitude, so that actually the Lord can roll away all our shame, or our blames. Can we do that? Yes, we can do that. Amen.